everyone, Coach Mandy here from Team SOCOM. I'm coming to you from my backyard in lovely Oregon where we're not having any rain and the sun isn't hiding, so that's awesome. So today's video, we're gonna go over some competition rules and guidelines when it comes to shot put and discus, seated and standing. So we'll talk about the ring, we'll talk about the sectors, we'll talk about how many throws you're going to get, um, the competition kind of timeline, and a few other items that I can think of during this process. So, sorry, don't mind the dog. He uh, wanted to be in the video today, refused to stay inside. So when it comes to seated, you're gonna be in your chair, and we're gonna strap you down. We're gonna strap you down on right across your quadriceps, and then we're gonna strap you down at your feet. So a general rule during competition is the back of your knees need to be pressed up against the chair, and they need to stay that way. Another rule is that you need to have your butt placed on the chair during the throws. We don't want any lifting because that gives you an advantage um, when you are throwing. So, so when it comes to competition, you're going to get like a 15 to 20 minute warm up time. You're gonna complete all of your throws back to back, not right there back to back, but you'll have a little bit of time in between each throws um, because of the amount of throws that we do have and getting in and out of the chair may not be, may not be as easy for some. So what we do is that we do the six throws back to back. So you'll get your warm up, like I said, and then I will place the shot put or discus into your hand, depending on which one you're competing with at the time. And you will have the ability to throw the shot put and then somebody will retrieve it and we'll do that six times. And then after that, you're going to go move on to discus and you'll get your six throws for discus. So, uh, during the competition, you have to throw within these sector lines. So the sector lines uh, will look like me. So I'm here, I'm the athlete, I'm the sector lines here. So I'm throwing out towards the sector. You don't wanna get it on the left side or the right side of the sector because those will be considered fouls. Um, taking the shot put away from your neck also may be considered a foul. And then too much lift from your butt off the chair will also be considered a foul. So the main goal is to get that shot put or discus as far away from you as possible within those sector lines. Okay, so let's talk about the standing shot put in discus. So when it comes to competition for standing and for standing seated, if I could talk, standing shot put and then standing discus, you are going to enter and exit a ring. So the shot put ring will be, um, will have a toe board. So it'll have like a white piece that you cannot touch on top or go beyond or it's considered a foul. Discus is the ring's a little bit bigger and you get a throw within the, the ring and then you'll always exit the back half. So some general rules. So you always want to enter and exit the back half of the ring. Um, and why is that? It's just to show that when you're finished and completed with your throw that you're done and you're gonna leave the ring in control. Another rule is you cannot touch the top of the toe board or outside of the toe board and you cannot touch the outside of the ring during competition. That is considered a foul. Similar to the foul that if you go beyond the sector lines, those are also considered fouls. Okay, so some other rules is that you'll have about a minute to complete your throw, which it may not sound like a lot of time, but it, it is plenty of time. You can stop and restart quite a few times if need be and then still complete your throw. So. During competition, for seated and for standing, but mainly for standing, um, the official will yell out your name and they'll say, let's say, Jessica is up, John is on deck, Becky is in the hole. So that's how the competition will start when they're calling out your names and then you'll go in and compete. So some other rules when it comes to the shot put and discus competition is of course you always want to be a team player. Um, try to avoid the cussing and the foul language. A lot of officials don't like that. Um, but just always just do your best and try to get that implement as far away from you as possible. Okay, next I'm gonna show you the what an actual ring would look like. So if you don't have a ring, that is absolutely fine. As you can see, I don't have a ring in my backyard so I'm just gonna use the cement slab that I have and you know if you have chalk you can always draw a ring or you can even put like a shoe right in front of you and use that as your base as to something that you're not going to go over so i'm going to now show you what that looks like okay now that we've gone over some rules for competition i'm going to show you what i'm going to use as a toe board or a ring 
just that's in my backyard. So I'm gonna be using the cement slab in which I'll turn away from the camera and I'll show you where I would place my feet. So the reason I'm doing this is I'm training myself to stay within the ring so I'm not fouling all my throws because like we talked about a little bit ago that if you do step up over the line out of the circle it is considered a foul. So what I would do is I would have my shot put on my discus or med ball or whatever implement that you're able to find in your house and I would use it for drills. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the edge of my cement pad and I'm going to use it as my point of reference where I do not want to go over this cement pad because then it would be considered a foul. So I'll show that one more time. So what I would not want to do is this. I will show you an example. I do not want to step beyond the cement pad because if I step beyond the cement pad that will be considered a foul. So what you can do for seated is you can bring your chair over which I'm going to grab. and I will just put it right up against the cement pad. So I'll use this cement pad as the point where I'm going to be releasing the implement and where they will also measure from. Here. Don't get too close to the edge, you could fall over and you do not want to do that. So this is where I would start doing practice drills, throwing. You may have a larger space than I do. If I do throw, I'll probably be throwing into the fence, so. All right, in this video, we went over the basic rules for competition, some guidelines for practice, and sector lines, and the ring. So, hope you enjoyed, and I miss you guys, and hope your training is going well.